so we can see first rule rules for finding out the oxidation number first rule we can take for hydrogen or let's say for alkali metals so for alkali metals yes they'll have an oxidation number of plus one oxidation number of plus one in their compounds in their compounds so like if you have na plus or li plus cs plus rb plus they are going to have an oxidation number of plus one in their in their compound example we can take one like let's say nacl so in nacl na is present na's oxidation number will be equal to plus one okay second rule we can take for alkaline earth metals so for alkaline earth metals Alkaline earth metals are going to have an oxidation number of plus 2 in their compounds. So they have an oxidation number of oxidation number of plus 2 in their compounds. In their compounds. Now see whatever oxidation number we are saying oxidation number is specific to each atom like if you have NaCl so each Na is going to have an oxidation number of plus 1 if in the compound you have 2 Na that means total oxidation number will be equal to plus 2 okay so here we can take example of like MgCl2 oxidation number of Mg will be equal to plus 2 for this so we have got this then moving to the next one hydrogen we can take halogen we can take so let's say for hydrogen first so generally hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one generally hydrogen as an oxidation number of plus one and minus one in metal hydrides. If you have metal hydrides, then in that hydrogen can have an oxidation number of negative one. Like example, if you take HCl. HCl is a type of acid. So in that hydrogen is having an oxidation number of plus one. But metal hydride like Na, sodium hydride. So in, in this Na is plus one and hydrogen is negative one. So this is metal hydride. This is clear. All right. So hydrogen we have done. Next is halogen. For halogen, in halides they have an oxidation number of minus one. In halides they have an oxidation number of minus one. Okay. Now, chlorine, bromine and iodine can have other oxidation as well. They can have plus oxidation state also. Plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 also they can exhibit. But fluorine will always have a negative 1 oxidation state in its in compounds. The reason being fluorine is the most electro negative element. So, fluorine is always going to have an oxidation state of negative 1. So, fluorine always has an oxidation number 
number of minus one, whereas chlorine, bromine, and iodine can also have positive oxidation states. And in the upcoming examples, we'll see that. Yeah. We also have positive oxidation state. Next, we can go for oxygen. So when you go in oxygen, generally oxidation number is minus 2. Generally oxidation number is minus 2. In peroxide, oxidation number is minus 1. In superoxide, oxidation number is minus half, minus 1 by 2. In O2F2, oxidation number is plus 1. And in OF2, oxidation number is plus 2. Okay. So, oxygen exhibit positive oxidation state only with fluorine because fluorine is the only element which has more electronegativity than oxygen itself. With the rest, all the other element, oxygen will have a negative oxidation state. So, oxide example, we can take like CO2 Okay, and that oxygen is having an oxidation state of negative 2. In general, it has an oxidation state of negative 2 only. CO2 you can take or H2SO4 you can take. In peroxide when we go, we can take example of H2O2 or we can take example of Na2O2. In superoxide, we can take example of KO2. Now, if you will try to find out the oxidation number in KO2, K is what? Alkali metal. An alkali metal we have already done they have an oxidation number of plus one so if k is having plus one charge that means whole o2 must be having negative one charge and that negative one charge is being shared between two oxygen atoms so that by oxidation number of one oxygen atom will be negative one by two understood all right so this we have got for oxygen then if there is any element in its elemental form its oxidation number will be zero oxidation number of any element in its elemental form is zero elemental form means only that element is present no other element is there like if you take p4 phosphorus is four but each of the phosphorus is attached with itself only so oxidation number of phosphorus will be zero you can take s8 or you can take o2 or you can take n2 etc so in all these cases oxidation number will be equal to zero this is clear then the total charge on the molecule or the ion is the sum of all oxidation number. Total charge on molecule or the ion is the sum of All oxidation numbers. Like example, you can take, let's say we have NaCl. 
So in NaCl, oxidation number of Na is plus 1 and oxidation number of chlorine is minus 1. When you add them both, you are going to get 0. So that's why there is no charge on NaCl. Okay. So oxidation number of each atom we can take and then we can add them up. So whatever we get, that will be the charge. Okay. All right. Then one more formula is, or one more rule is there that the oxidation number of any element is not going to exceed its group number. Oxidation number of any element does not exceed its group number. Its group number. what do you mean by this like if you take example sulfur belongs to group 16 right group 16 is also called 6a okay so we have to take this one 6a or 6b in the ncrt fifth chair it is written 6b okay in the older tables it is stated 6a all right so in either case it is group 6 only whether it's a or b that means sulfur cannot it exceeds its oxidation number more than 6. Maximum possible oxidation number for sulfur will be equal to 6. So, maximum oxidation number for sulfur will be 6. Now, halogens are there. Halogen belongs to group 17, right? So, if you go to halogens, in that case, what you will find? That maximum oxidation number will be? Maximum it will be 7, right? Yes. Sulfur can get 6, okay. Group number, okay, just, just wait, I will show you that. No, 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 the IUPAC one. Just wait a moment. Yes. 